Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to talk about Serenity today. So this was the latest hero. I think I had talked about trying to get Serenity. She's pretty popular, one of the end game uh, meta heroes right now. A lot of value. You wouldn't be able to see all of that when you first unlock her. Uh, you've got to be able to ascend her all the way up. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of her stats, her traits, uh, her abilities, and we'll talk about why she's such a great addition to your team. Alright, so starting off, she's a fast assassin rogue. Uh, so she's going to get to go first in the you know in the order. If we go to her stats, looking at the traits, uh, martial artist. So if she's an assassin. Her increased uh, crit and dodge chance. Kind of have to scan down. It's hard to see these stats after I've got a bunch of uh, runes on her. I am using her for uh, for a lot of stuff now. You can see the chaos reduction in damage. Uh, but the big things up here I want to point out. So fast, everyone knows about fast. Uh, Spellseeker weapons. So allied melee physical attacks have a chance to purge buff and can't be retaliated against. So no retaliation is kind of a big deal. She pairs really well with melee attackers. So you want to make sure not ranged. Um, you know, so you can, but you're going to miss out on this and and the next uh, next thing we'll talk about here. Uh, so no magic technique. She has a chance to apply no magic on any attack, really, so basic attack, and with her, uh, I believe, with her other attacks as well, maybe at least just the first one, um, does no magic across everybody, maybe not the next two, and that prevents the next buff from being added. Now, these can stack up, actually. I've seen on some of the, the battles I've had where you get, like, ten stacks of no magic on certain characters. It doesn't, you know, they could be buffing all day long. They're not going to get through all those stacks, and that really that's a huge benefit. You know, they might put their defense up, they may have other, you know, other buffs that are going on, attack buffs, things like that. Those can't happen. It really helps protect your team. Serenity's kind of a counterintuitive character because she's, you know, low health, she's a rogue, um, but she's doing a lot to increase the survivability of your team. And that's one of the big things that I'm interested in. Uh, and, and so we'll talk about kind of the rest of those, those things. So Void Aura, all enemies start with Null Magic and gain a stack once per turn, so it's not just her basic attack. She's giving a, a layer of no magic every single turn. Again, I was saying that has a big, really helps out a lot with all the buffs that the other team could be putting on. Uh, Adept Strikes, allies gain haste after using a single melee physical attack once per round. So not just like once per battle, but every round. If you have, if everyone on your team uh, has melee attack, you can attack first and then do whatever your second thing is going to be. So Angel Emily, for example, attack first with her melee attack and then resurrect a, an ally, or attack with the attack with Emily and then heal everybody. Whoever you're using, you'll see some of the teams that use Serenity. It's much more common that they'll have a bunch of melee attackers on their team because there's a lot of value there. All right, this is one of the key things too that makes her so helpful. So this is Epic Spell Absorption. Allies take 60% reduced damage from non-physical and 20% reduced damage from chaos attacks. And then Assassin Allies actually get an even bigger buff. But again, the counterintuitive piece, she's not a tank. She's not someone that would normally be reducing attack and things, but, uh, but that's what she's doing. So she's giving you that extra ability with, uh, with your attacks to double up on attacks. She's got the Null Magic that she's putting across to everybody. Uh, you know, on the other team, all your enemies, so they can't be buffing up, and she's reducing that incoming attack. Now, all this is for non-physical attacks uh, and chaos attacks. So physical attacks, there's still going to be a weakness there, but generally you pair her with a really good tank. Um, Grandar is, I think, a popular choice. And then he's tanking stuff. You can put, uh, as I have, if we go in here, I think it's this one. You put a charm on, or a, a rune on her that only allows her to be targetable by provoke, or if she's taunting, she's not going to taunt. So then all of the physical attacks, which are, you know, a lot of those things are coming just directly at your tank, uh, whoever you have kind of intentionally taking that damage, and anything that's AoE, she's getting reduced damage from, uh, you know, any magic or anything like that, any chaos attacks, she's taking less damage, and everybody else is taking less damage as well. So it really helps the survivability of your team. All right, if you look at her attacks, you've got uh, double daggers. Remember, she's gonna attack twice anyway. So she actually does two attacks, armor-piercing attacks, every time. 
and she has a chance to do three times damage and transfer all debuffs to the enemy. So she's attacking like, if you just do normal attacks, it's going to be four attacks. Now granted, they're lower damage, but she's got the chance to do more damage and kind of crit and, and do this times three, and once you get your epic weapon, which we do now have for her, you got even more chances to do a lot of damage. So it ends up, even though there's like her normal base attack is relatively low, you end up doing quite a bit with those like four attacks. There's a high chance that something else is going to happen. All right, Void Assault. I'm sure you've seen this lots of times. You're going to add no magic on everybody. You're going to attack everybody for pretty reasonable damage um, and add no magic to each enemy, preventing the next buff. So again, this just stacks it up. They're going to start the round with no magic, then right away she's going to do Void Assault. You're going to do no magic again. It just feels like a, like a, a cheat or a gimme that this actually counts. All of these count as melee attacks, all of her skills, so she still gets to do it again. So you can use two skills in one turn. Um, I think, for me, I don't, I don't know if there's a starts power. Okay, so you can use Void Assault and Dispelling Strike your first turn. So you can silence and do no magic in your first turn. Uh, just, you know, really valuable to to have that to start off. You've got two stacks now of no magic across uh, across the enemy, and maybe they've done a buff or two, but you've then eliminated those those buffs. Really powerful that way. And you've got spell rent here, transfers one debuff, adds no magic. That's what I was kind of wondering. This might be the only one that doesn't add no magic. Uh, so anyway, but pretty good damage on these energy cost two. You know, you can use these things pretty frequently, even if it was just double daggers, that works, uh, you know, does quite a bit of damage as well. I've actually tried to focus on having a mix here. You know, she's gonna, she's supposed to be an attacker. She does pretty good damage, <clears throat> but I really want her to stay alive. And she's the least uh, tanky of anyone that I'm gonna have on my team. So I've got, right now, I've got this damage reduction and health. Uh, a lower lower class rune here. You know, I'm trying to upgrade this over time to something that's that's better suited for her. Uh, but some health, some damage reduction, some defense, lots of defense, some damage reduction, and that, especially that key uh, targetable only by taunt or provoke. And then here, this one was just straight attack. But I think with the light element, I can get some good defensive stuff in here. Uh, and then this one actually really helps her out because of the healing on damage dealt. She does a lot of damage, she can do a lot of healing from that damage, and some damage penetration here. So, gonna be working up over time, look again at her epic really quickly. So she's getting quite a bit of attack, increased max health, increased defense, and then 14% chance right now to deal times three damage and transfer all debuffs to the enemy. Because she does so many attacks, double attack for every basic attack, and then you, know, you get two of those, it ends up triggering quite a bit, and times three ends up, you know, pulling up her attack a lot. So overall, that's kind of the high level for Serenity. Adds a lot of survivability to your team, uh, adds a lot of damage to your team. You know, all that null magic is really helping to not let the, the enemy team, like, build up a lot of buffs. Really helpful. I think she has a, a good place in a lot of different teams because of all that, especially teams that, that utilize melee uh, attackers. So that's it. Want to do a little little shout out for Serenity. Still working away on putting together my teams. For right now, my main focus is Grandar, Serenity. Let's go down here. Underlord Thrax will be my next. So I've got Grandar fully ascended. I've got Serenity fully ascended. Haven't ascended uh, Thrax yet, but I've got a good path and I'm working my way there. And he will help out because I'm hoping I'll have three slow members and then Serenity, who's fast, but also gives us those other survivability benefits. And the, for the final, I think it's going to depend on which direction we go. I really wanted to have a healer. Num Num's not nearly as good of a healer when you don't have Bramble there. Bramble just really helps out with the second attack and increasing the crit. Then Num Num's critting and multi-attacking, uh, doing a lot of damage and healing the team a lot. But if he's on his own, you don't have space for Bramble, he's not nearly as good of a healer. So ideally, it would be a slow melee uh, healer. I don't know if we've got anyone to, to fit that category yet. There are other good healers, but they don't synergize with that team as well. 
Uh, Morocco would be another good one to add, and that's what I see that on. I see him on some of the other teams, so I'm working my way up with him as well. Uh, but I guess there's going to likely be a little bit of a change up depending on if I'm doing campaign and trying for survivability and, and working through these levels, or if it's in uh, in dungeon raids, and then Moroku might be might be better there. So that's what I'm thinking right now. Again, just high level for Serenity. Hope that's helpful. Good luck. Uh, uh, good luck to everyone, and let me know what you think. Other characters or other teams that you're looking at, and we'll talk to everyone soon.